Hello friends, in the first part of the edible oil refining lecture, we studied what are the different uh, operations that are carried out in oil refining like uh, the degumming, neutralization, bleaching and deodorization. These are the major steps of oil refining, edible oil refining process and what are different components which are removed in these steps and of course, these steps are supported by uh, appropriate like uh, washing step, centrifugation step and separation step etcetera. So, degubbing de and neutralization, their details, process details technology details we studied in the earlier lecture. Now, let us take the remaining part of the oil refining process like bleaching and deodorization. So, you know that depending upon the extraction process parameters and extraction process used along with the triglycerides, the other components also like uh, chlorophyll which imparts green color to the oil or carotenoids which impart reddish color to the oil or yellowish color to the oil, they are uh, uh, present in the oil. So, they also get extracted from the oil seed to the oil. So, this becomes necessary important that these uh, other pigments that pigments are those uh, materials or components which contribute to the color other than those of the triglyceride, they should be removed. So, for that purpose this bleaching operation is. So, it is basically a physical process where the impurities in the oil particularly those pigments and other related components, they are removed with the help of an adsorbent the impurities and the active sites of the adsorbents are attracted to each other by van der Waal force of attraction and the amount of attraction and accordingly which will ultimately influence the extraction efficiency of the process that is the bleaching efficiency. So, the amount of attraction depends upon several factors like the amount of electrostatic force on each of the impurities and the adsorbent, the size of each component, the degree of intimate mixing between the oil and the adsorbent, porosity of the adsorbent particles and a specific surface area of the adsorbent. As it is obvious this uh, bleaching reduces the pigments like chlorophyll and other color bodies present. It reduces the trace metals such as calcium ion, magnesium ion, ferrous or ferric ions, sodium ions etcetera and these even calcium, magnesium etcetera they may get uh, removed from their counterparts like uh, this chlorophyll or other components from the chlorophylls etcetera during the processing step even during the neutralization step or other steps and if they not taken care of if they are not controlled they may act as a pro oxidant and this actually may uh, re reduce the self life of the oil etcetera. So, they should also be removed, they are removed during the bleaching process. This bleaching reduces the level of non hydratable phospholipids in the refined oil. It removes the decomposition products such as aldehydes, ketones, polymers, non triglyceride produced from the oil oxidation, etcetera. The different uh, adsorbents which are used, they include neutral bleaching clay, or which is commonly known as Fuller's earth acid processed clay, activated charcoal and silica. This bleaching system may be a dry bleaching system or may be a wet bleaching system. In the dry bleaching process, the water washed 
and vacuum dried oil its moisture content is less than 0.1 percent is used as the feed to the vacuum bleacher where only bleaching clay is added. The bleaching clay could be acid activated or it could be neutral and acid activated clay of course, is more effective in removing the color uh, the, and the trace metals in the aisle as compared to the neutral or general clay. So, in this figure you can see the different uh, components of the dry bleaching systems. They include a plate heater where the aisle is heated, these are the plate heaters and here the aisles are heated to a temperature of about 100 to 110 degrees Celsius and then the heated aisle is sent to the vacuum bleacher. Next this vacuum bleacher this uh, here it is mixed with the adsorbent at appropriate amount may be 0.5 percent of the aisle or less right. And it is uniformly mixed and agitated at a maximum agitator speed of 120 rpm etcetera for 30 to 45 minutes. Then from here it uh, the there is a press leaf filter the adsorbent mixed oil is filtered and sent back to the bleacher until the oil is clear that is until all the adsorbent which are removed is uh, uh, which were added is removed. And finally, in the last the, it is, there is a polishing filter or polish filter is provided where the aisle is a, any that is even finally suspended particles etcetera they are removed uh, to the and after that the aisle is sent to the uh, reheat the incoming aisle and in the last there is a, some cooling system is provided where the aisle is cooled down to 40 degrees Celsius by using cooled water. There are certain points uh, for consideration that is critical control points in dry bleaching process and that is the type of the or quality of the incoming aisle and that is important. If the bleached aisle is high in content of phosphorus, soap or moisture etcetera, then it may require more amount of the bleaching clay. Even soap, phosphorus, moisture etcetera have a tendency to plug the porosity of the filter bed and therefore, it, it may result into the decrease in the filtration rate. Higher soap in the aisle uh, uh, produces high free fatty acids, higher amount of bleaching clay. However, reduces the level of tocopherol and other natural antioxidant. So, it should not be very high. So, the amount of bleaching clay to be used should be properly optimized. Similarly, type of the bleaching clay, it the bleaching clay should have the high absorption capacity to remove the impurities. For acid activated clay, the pH should be in the acidic region. Even numerous active site for the adsorption of impurities should be there in the it should have a sufficient uh, numerous active sites it should have appropriate porosity and of course good flow rate through the filter bed degree of mixing that is aisle and the adsorbent must be in intimate contact for better adsorption of the impurities and for this reason the mechanical mixer or mechanical mixing becomes a very important factor in making the bleaching process more effective. The bleaching temperature again very very important step the temperature increases the contact between the adsorbent and the adsorbates in the aisle. High temperature damages the aisle through oxidation and polymerization. Low temperature the viscosity of the aisle is high and if, high, if the viscosity of the oil is high, it will reduce the dispersion efficiency of the mechanical mixer. So, the optimum temperature in the bleaching uh, equipment or bleacher uh, that is the bleacher is very very important for ensuring higher 
efficiency of the process. Contact time between the oil and the bleaching clay is again an important factor. It should be proper or optimum duration because if the contact time is short then adsorption of the impurities may not be complete. If the it is long contact time then acid clay may react more with the oil especially with the chlorophylls and cause their breakdown. There may be a higher loss of the natural antioxidant present in the oil and there may be formation of dimers or polymers in the oil if there is a longer contact time between the oil and the adsorbents. In the wet bleaching system the again the process steps more or less are the same only if uh, that the oil from the water wash centrifuge is treated with the bleaching clay in a reactor here and the oil temperature bleaching clay dosage mixing method mixing time are similar to those as the dry bleaching process after 20 to 30 minutes of the contact time between the oil and the clay the oil leaves the vacuum reactor and enters the vacuum dryer because see here that is it from the reactor it goes to the vacuum dryer and where the moisture is in the oil is reduced to a level of less than 0.1. So, in fact, uh, this wet bleaching system is uh, better and more efficient than that of the dry uh, bleaching process and it uh, results in less clay usage. So, this is considered to be a better than the wet. So, the critical point for consideration in wet bleaching system also are the moisture in the feed oil. In fact, that is the very important that is in the feed oil the moisture should be in between 0.2 to 0.4 percent. If the low moisture the benefit of the wet bleaching is not accomplished. If the moisture is more than 0.4 percent premature binding of the filter screen may be there premature blending of the filter screen may be a problem. Even absolute pressure in the bleacher reactor is important operating pressure should be maintained at 500 torr higher pressure in the reactor the oil would have higher moisture content if the lower pressure the reactor the the oil might be too dry to drive the benefits of the wet bleaching process operating pressure in the vacuum dryer is maintained to 50 torr maximum and it allows the oil to be dried to a less than 0.1 percent moisture before the filtration. The vacuum bleacher you see here that is schematic of the vacuum bleaching system has been shown in this figure where it is basically a pressure vessel with 3 to 4 baffles provided and a top entering agitator. The agitator is provided with the uh, multiple slat, uh, set of impellers. These are of axial blade pushes the oil down continuously, radial blade capable of shear action. So, the adsorbent and the oil are brought to intimate mixing continuously. Baffles which are provided they prevent any vortex formation and the entire oil in the vessel is turn about turn over about twice per minute in the so to ensure that thorough mixing and intimate contact between the bleacher uh, clay uh, bleaching clay and the oil in the equipment. So, after the bleaching before it is sent to the uh, as I told you earlier that is the it is a uh, the earth or clay or adsorbent which has been added into the oil this must be separated because the pigments and other products they get adsorbed. So, these earth particles or clay particles are removed using appropriate filtration steps ok. That is the so, in to ensure the continuous 
नेचर ऑफ द रिफाइनिंग प्लांट द ब्लीच एयर इज नॉर्मली सप्लाइड विद द टू फिल्टर्स द आयल सप्लाई टू द फिल्टर एंड टू द ऑपरेटिंग साइकिल ऑफ द फिल्टर इज कैन बी ऑटोमेटेड एंड इट इज एट मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट द आयल ऑप्टेन्ड फ्रॉम द ब्लीचिंग अर्थ फिल्ट्रेशन शुड बी क्लियर ब्राइट एंड फ्री फ्राम ब्लीचिंग अर्थ आर क्ले पार्टिकल एज मच एज पॉसिबल सो अकॉर्डिंगली द फिल्ट्रेशन सिस्टम शुड बी सफिशियंट इन अ फॉर इट शुड हैव प्रॉपर एफिशियंसी एफिशियंट दैट इज दिल्टर इज स्क्रीन एक्सेट्रा देयर साइज एक्सेट्रा शुड बी ऑफ अप्रोप्रिएट नेचर सो दैट इट कैन रिमूव इवन द फाइनेस्ट पार्टिकल पॉसिबल सो द जनरली यूज फिल्टर्स इन आयल रिफाइनिंग प्लांट्स मे बी प्रेट प्लेट एंड फ्रेम फिल्टर वर्टिकल लीफ टैंक और प्रेशर लीफ फिल्टर और सेंट्रीफ्यूगल सेल्फ क्लीनिंग फिल्टर्स सो दिस फिल्टर्ड आयल इज नेक्स्ट पास्ट टू द डी एडराइजेशन आर इवन डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग शेड्यूल प्लास्टिंग शेड्यूल इवन आफ्टर द ब्लीचिंग द आयल मे बी डाइवर्टेड टू द दिस इवन प्रोडक्ट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग फॉर हाइड्रोजिनेशन फॉर विंटराइजेशन फॉर अदर के बट इफ इट इज टू बी यूज फॉर फ्राइंग पर्पजेज फॉर कुकिंग आयल पर्पज एक्सेट्रा इट इज नॉर्मली सेंड टू द डी एडराइजर वेयर द दिस अदर द इम्प्योरिटीज एक्सेट्रा इवन द फ्री फैटी एक्सेट्रा विच आर नॉट सेपरेटेड इन द अर्लियर प्रोसेस दे आर सेपरेटेड हियर ओके दैट इज कैसे द डी एडराइजेशन इज द लास्ट स्टेज ऑफ द रिफाइनिंग प्रोसेस एंड इन दिस प्रोसेस the adders and flavors of fats and oils are totally removed and in fact after the dehydrogenation process the oil or fat is of a bland in taste in fact the experienced tasters also should not be able to identify the source of the oil if uh, a source of the oil after dehydrogenation so the dehydrogenation should be carried out in such a manner dehydrogenation of the refined and bleached oil is carried out under vacuum and at an absolute pressure of 1 to 6 mm of mercury the processing steps in the dehydrogenation are deaeration to remove dissolved oxygen particularly to prevent oxidation and to remove moisture from the oil heating of the oil to a temperature of around 240 to 260 degree celsius under vacuum steam distillation that is the blowing of steam through the oil maintain at around 255 to 260 degree celsius okay under high vacuum and in fact it is during this steam distillation process the fatty acids etc are removed they are evaporated and then they are distilled to remove so in fact uh, since uh, high temperature normally is used and the fatty acid vapors are corrosive in nature so accordingly the equipment the construction material for the equipment etc should be of such nature that it can be withstand this uh, highly corrosive fatty acids vapor etc and in fact uh, it might so happen by the nature of the temperature and vacuum etc or processing steps uh, Uh, used in the dehydrogenation plant that the dehydrogen oil may contain certain metal uh, ions etc even the carbon which has been from the this uh, material or even the earth particles etc which has been used in the and it is not separated in the filtration process so this may so have. so in the last step of the dehydrogenation process citric acid is added and it is almost a compulsory step that is the citric acid is added it acts as a chelating agents so the metal ions are chelated so otherwise if the citric acid is not added the dehydrogenized oil would revert or oxidize rapidly and whole purpose of the process may get defeated defeated so finally the cooling of the oil it is a oil dehydrogenized oil could is cooled to room temperature uh, properly packaged and stored and appropriate conditions so 
the functions of the dehydrogenation we have already seen that is the this the main important role is to remove the free fatty acids to as low as possible maybe less than 0.03 percent it removes the other odoriferous compound aldehyde ketones etc etc which are not removed in other process it reduces the peroxide value to almost zero dehydrogenized oil should be zero peroxide value it should not have any oxidation decomposition products etc any residual trace metals etc should not be present there okay and this is an as i told you that is the citric acid addition is a essential treatment essential step and is not a substitute for the bleaching step there is some increase in the amount of polymers conjugated dyes or other oil decomposition products in the oil after dehydrogenation depending upon the dehydrogenation conditions okay so accordingly that uh, the condition should be properly adjusted to minimize these products okay or there can be a very small but detectable increase in the trans fatty acids okay content in the oil depending upon the dehydrogenation temperature and pressure so that also the conditions it becomes very important in the during the dehydrogenation step that the conditions particularly the temperature and pressure etc should be maintained in such a way that it results in the amount of polymers are conjugated dyne etc at the same time it should not uh, convert the cis to form of the fatty acids etc to the transform so the factors which need uh, consideration during dehydrogenation process are the deaeration like the proper deaeration should be done to remove dissolved air and moisture to prevent oxidation uh, negative impact of oxidative polymers is the it they produce poor flavor stability in the dehydrogenized oil they cause rapid fouling of the heat bleacher and dehydrogenizer system operating temperature and pressure as i told you it should be maintained to the optimum level otherwise it causes bleaching of the color pigments like beta carotenes etc low operating pressure must be maintained in the dehydrogenizer a high then the normal operating pressure reduces the ability of the dehydrogenizer to remove the odoriferous compounds from the oil the amount of stripping steam it is again also important factor because if this steam creates agitation in the oil which helps remove the volatile matter from the oil the steam expands under the reduced pressure increasing the specific surface area and this enhances the contact between the steam oil and the volatile components in the oil so owing to expanded volume the steam can not remove the volatile matter more effectively so amount of the stripping steam is important citric acid content again there is appropriate amount of citric acid should be used okay as a chelating agent because it complexes the trace metals like those of iron calcium magnesium etc at higher temperature citric acid decomposes leaving very little or no bleaching effect on the oil cooling of the oil again important operation this should be done with care and taking into consideration the type of oil being processed okay oils in high pufa must be cooled down to prevent the formation of undesirable component quality of the dehydrogenized oil is obtained depending upon the type of the dehydrogenizer used like batch method semi continuous method or continuous method we get generally varying quality of the dehydrogenized oil but it is important that for having a better organoleptic acceptability the dehydrogenized oil should be odorless clean taste with no unpleasant after taste it should be light in color it should have low or almost nil free fatty acids low or nil peroxide value maximum antioxidant 
and less amount of decomposition product such as ketone, aldehydes, hydrocarbons, etc. So, accordingly, the dehydrization steps should be carried out and parameters should be controlled. The batch dehydrizer, you see here in this the setup that is in fact, it is a pressure vessel or kettle that is a con consists of a vessel in the form of a vertical cylinder with a dust or cone heads. Okay. See here there is internal heating pipe, these are the different heating pipes are provided, stepping steam inlet is provided from here and the neutralized and bleach aisle inlet is A, B is the stepping steam inlet comes from this pipe, then from the C is uh, here where there is a dehydrized aisle goes out, the vapors etcetera they are removed from top of the vessel point D, E and F are heating system inlet and condensate outlet, it is the condensate outlet and heating system inlet. So, basically the stripping is injected into the bottom of the vessel through a distributor and a device for indicating aisle temperature, pressure etcetera is provided and uh, in fact, batch dehydrizers they are generally that uh, they have the advantage of simplicity of design, flexibility and ease and ease of uh, operation. Semi continuous dehydrizers they are again like uh, they consist of a tall cylinder cell of carbon steel constructions with 5 or more 304 SS trays stacked inside that you can see here in this there are different trays stacks inside the cylindrical vessel. Each tray is fitted with a steam sparge and is capable of holding a measured batch of oil. Oil is charged to the top kettle tray to the top tray where it is deaerated de while being heated with steam to about 160 to 165 degree Celsius. Then at the end of the heating period the charge is automatically dropped to the second tray and the top tray is refilled and then the process continues that is the in the second tray again it is given desired reaction time and oil is heated to the operating temperature and again after the desired certain reaction time this it is automatically dropped to the next tray and then from the first tray the material come to the next. So, in this process the cycle goes on. So, this becomes a semi continuous. So, when the oil reaches to the bottom tray it is cooled down to around 40 to 50 degree Celsius temperature discharged to the drop tank from which the it is pumped through a pulsing filter to storage. Continuous dehydrizers are based on a series of steam agitated trays or compartments which are often stacked vertically in a cylindrical cell. You can see here in this picture figure or schematic presentation stripping of free fatty acids and other volatile compounds and heat bleaching are carried out simultaneously in this system. The retention time per tray is usually 10 to 30 minutes. Typically liquid levels of about 0.3 to 0.8 meters are maintained by overflow pipes or wires in the each tray that counter current principle introduces efficiencies through more effective use of the injected steam to reduce the quantity required. A smaller vacuum due to the smaller requirements of the volume of the oil that is a treated at a particular moment of time. So, since at a particular moment of time 
the quantity of oil is less so accordingly for stripping of the undesirable components etc the requirement of the vacuum also is comparatively less here in this case so in this uh, table i have just tried to give you a comparison between the batch semi continuous and continuous deodorizers regarding the suitability stripping steam usage production rate energy recovery and cost of the deodorizing per unit volume or per kg of the oil like for example the batch deodorizers are comparatively costlier processes whereas about 30 to 40 percent the less cost in the semi continuous that that of the batch process and even the continuous processes they are normally 10 to 20 percent of the batch process the suitability of the oil like batch process deodorized oil they uh, can be used for making emulsifiers and interesterified products etc the deodorized oil be semi continuous process are is suitable where the frequent product change over is needed however they are not very good for making emulsifier or interesterified product the oil deodorized using continuous process are suitable for continuous production of large volume of product with minimum number of product change overs they are however not suitable for making emulsifier or interesterified products etc so the production rate normally low in the case of batch process in the semi continuous process it is the 4 to 6 times more than that of the batch process and the continuous process has 5 to 8 times higher production efficiency than the batch process so friends now depending upon the resources available the end use extended use storage etc of the oil what are the level of impurities etc that should be removed in the deodorization process that depends upon the efficiency of the earlier processes like uh, bleaching neutralization etc so depending upon that the appropriate method of deodorization should be used appropriate process parameter should be used and the purpose here is that after this deodorization process we should get a good quality oil all right which can be used for edible purposes for cooking for frying and for other purposes and it should not contain any component other than the triglyceride as far as possible okay. so after the refining the next step as i told you that is the, the very different uh, products these oils are used for conversion into different products like solid fatty for recovery of various components even that the waste streams which are obtained in the different uh, stages like uh, the degumming i told you that they are used for lecithin production similarly from the other streams also they can be used for extraction of like for distillation etc of the free fatty acids for the alcohol and for other so various valuable products can be or by products can be derived from this oil and oil refining plants so with this this uh, we have uh, completed the oil extraction and oil refining maybe in the next class we will take up the other uh, like uh, different some of the oil products like hydrogenation interesterification or even some the changes which may generally take place during oil and oil products during handling and storage so with this i thank you for your kind attention